Well, these are people uh, who uh, work on MS research. Okay. Um, this is one of our labs in the centre, and they're all set up so that uh, people can um, do the scientific research as efficiently as possible. So we have people um, at the end looking at molecular biology, so looking at the molecules involved in MS. And then we have people looking at different slides, so we've yeah. got sections of both MS brain and uh, from animal work that we do, we can look at the different um, pathologies of MS mm. and just making up some chemicals here. Okay, cool. Yeah, so the thing that we're very keen to uh, research is ways to improve the brain system of repair. Mm. So it's worth thinking of MS as two phases. So if we look at this, this graph here, you can see this is disability on this axis against time. And this is an average MS patient um, who has a relapse, so they have uh, a worsening of their disability that then gets better again. And then we have a second one and a third one, but over time generally what happens is that they don't get better back to normal and at this point things start getting worse okay. on their own. Right, you see that I'm worried that I might be at that point, as obviously I've now walked with a stick. Before, two years ago, you would never know there was anything wrong with me, to yeah, be honest. Absolutely. Yeah, but I might be... But you might there. also be here, but yeah. with the line going across yeah, here. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. But I think this is a useful graph because what's important to realise is that initially in MS, there's a lot of inflammation, and this is what correlates to the relapses. But in the progressive end of it, it's what um, we call neurodegeneration, so the nerves themselves are dying back. And the drugs we have at the moment that are that are good for MS, and they really are good for MS, are good at reducing these ra relapses, but they don't work in this phase. Well, why don't they work in that phase? Well, I think they don't work because they act on inflammation, right. and they don't help prevent neurodegeneration. Right. And so we have to really have a completely mi a mind shift, a ch complete change in thinking about MS. We'll be using anti-inflammatory drugs, but we've got to use things that stop nerves dying, which we call n neuroprotective therapies. And so this is what our centre is very much concentrating on, is to try to build ways to protect nerves. So what we can try and do is either, sort of, is either try and prevent these nerves from dying to promote their survival, or we can try and get the oligodendrocyte repair system to work better. Oligo, if I can say it right, oligodendrocytes, what yes. are they? Explain to me what, what they, they are. are. So they're cells in your brain, um, and they... they uh, they make our myelin, so they make the insulation of, um, on the nerves. Yeah. Um, and they actually do it by putting out their membrane and then wrapping the membrane around the, like a bit like a Swiss roll. Yeah, yeah. If you think yeah. of it like the, um, the insulation of wires, the insulation falls off. And the idea is if you can put this back, it protects the nerves from dying back. And we think it's the nerves dying back which causes the progressive symptoms of MS. Okay, so if you uh, create a system where you can uh, get the myelin to regrow, will that help the nerves that have died off yeah. or shriveled or whatever yeah. grow back? W well, is that possible or you don't know yet? Well, I think initially we're not aiming to make them grow back. What we want to do is to stop them dying in the first place. Right. Yeah. Because clearly you know, prevention is better than cure, sure. if you like. And so we do know that the myelin sheath, if we put it back, will protect these axons because as well as just being like an insulation and a wire, it's, it also nourishes them. It actually provides energy to the axons. And so if we can put it back, then we'll protect them from dying back. And it's always better to do that than to try and regrow things. Yeah. Can, can you and your colleagues in the UK or anywhere else in the world for that matter, find the magic bullet, the holy grail, to make me throw this flipping thing away? Yeah. Um, and if you can, how long is it going to be? Yeah, I think, I think what we have to do is to have sensible steps. So what we want to do with promoting remyelination is to slow down people's need to have a stick and slow down their deterioration. Mm. And that's got to be the first aim. Then we'd like to be able to, to improve remyelination so much that we can stop people getting worse. Yeah. And ultimately, we would love to be able to reverse it so that you could throw away your stick. Yes. But that has to be the third down the line. We've got to do the low-hanging fruit So I need first. to get my, keep my expectations It's low or...? I think realistic rather than low. You know, this is very exciting. Yeah. And it's very hopeful that we can do things to reduce people's disability in the future. Yeah. But we've got to do it one step at a time. Um, we've got to make sure that drugs work. 
that they get to where we want them to, that they're safe. You know, there's no point having a drug that improves remyelination if it also gives you cancer. And I think it's probably unrealistic to think there'll be one magic bullet here. You know, we will clearly need the drugs for the inflammation, so we'll clearly need this. Mm. Um, but we'll need neuroprotective strategies as well. Mm. And I think if you think of it like a two-pronged attack, mm. we need anti-inflammatory drugs and we need neuroprotective drugs, but you might even think it's a three- or four-pronged attack, so you might need one anti-inflammatory drug and then a neuroprotective drug working that way and a neuroprotective drug working that way. But it, it, just as a matter of interest, when I was first diagnosed, well, actually before I was actually diagnosed, but when I'd had my first couple of attacks, mm. my, the neurologist I was seeing at the time was, was saying, oh, don't worry, it'll go away, but take vitamin B because that'll help your nerves calm down. He was just calling it myel myelitis at the time. Yes. But because vitamin B, I know, does sort of have a proactive element on the nervous system. Is there anything, you know, you, yeah, you're taking the steroids when you have a flare-up, say, should we not also be on vitamin B pills as well? Things like, I mean, yeah. I don't know, I'm just throwing it out there because it just no. occurred to me. So vitamin B was, people were more keen on that in the past. I think the one that's taken over is vitamin D. Yes, we've heard a lot about that yes. actually up in Orkney. Have yeah. you? Yeah. Um, because I think vitamin D has more than anecdotal evidence that it is useful in managing your immune system. So it, it seems to be able to direct your immune system into knowing what's self and what's foreign. Because what we think of one of the problems with MS is that the immune system thinks that the brain covering, the myelin covering is foreign and therefore it attacks it. So vitamin D is useful for that. And, that's, and I think that I'm certainly recommending to all my patients that they should take vitamin D living in Scotland. Because the weather was terrible. <laughs> I'm sure it was terrible. And you know, between November and March, we do not get enough UV to meet vitamin D in our skin. And so probably most of the population is deficient in vitamin D. And of course, it's great for bones as well as for MS. And it may be useful for other autoimmune diseases. So I suspect we'll end up all taking vitamin D. And I think that is useful. Um, what I don't know, and what I don't think happens is that I don't think vitamin D helps to protect your nerves. I think it's more on the inflammatory it's side. It's in the initial it. side. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think what we do have to do is have this uh, at least a two-pronged attack to think, yes, we need to damp down inflammation, but we also need to promote nerve care, if you like, protection on nerves. And I think that's where it's going in terms of the very new and exciting research to try and improve people's quality of life in MS. Mm. And I think realistically we'll do it, but it takes time. Mm. So it, it's not going to happen. I mean, I always sort of say, is it going to happen within my lifetime? I mean, you know, assuming that I live to say 80. I think, I think we'll have drugs that will help this phase of the disease within your lifetime. Yeah.